welcome and thank you for joining our Recycling 101 webinar. My name is Elise Frola and I'm the Outreach Specialist for Hamilton County Resource. Before we get started, I have just a few housekeeping items that I'd like to go over. Um, the first one is that this webinar is being recorded, as you probably have already seen, and the recording will be posted to our YouTube later this week, and I will send out a link to that YouTube recording to all of you on this webinar and anyone who registered. The next thing is that if you have a question about curbside recycling, which is what we are, of course, focusing on today, please put your question in the Q&A box like you all have been doing already. That's awesome. Put your questions in the Q&A box and we will answer as many questions as we can after Hannah is finished with her presentation. <laughs> so don't worry, we have a large chunk of time set aside for questions and we plan to answer, of course, as many as possible and hope to get through them all. If I do not get through all of your questions, what we're gonna do is I will write down all those questions answer them and then send them out in the same email to all of you as I will send out the recording. Okay, so it is now my pleasure to introduce Hannah Hensel. <laughs> she is the Education and Community Relations Assistant for Brumkey Waste and Recycling. Take it away, Hannah. Hi, everybody. Um, I was just looking through the attendees and I uh, saw some familiar names, so it's nice to uh, see some of you again and hopefully virtually meet the rest of you. Um, I'm always available for any questions or if anyone would like to take a tour um, or anything along those lines. But I think we're just going to um, get started so that hopefully we can stay on schedule with time. Um, let's see. Alrighty. Um, so to start, I'm just going to go over a little bit of the history. I, I believe most of you probably live within Hamilton County, and, and some of you might not know the history of our company. Um, so I always like to start there. It's a little bit of a funny story about how our company had started. Um, so we're among the nation's largest privately owned waste and recycling companies. Um, so nationwide, we are one of the biggest. Our company started in 1932. Um, it was a coal delivery service and a junkyard business, and we started in Carthage, Ohio, so um, a little bit out, outside of downtown in just a little neighborhood. Um, back then, they, uh, Mr. Rumpke delivered coal um, and collected people's junk from their homes. The 30s was the time of the Depression, so a lot of people didn't have a lot of money to pay him for what he was doing, um, so they would trade and barter with him, so they would trade with him things like eggs from their chickens or vegetables from their garden or really anything that they had around the house. Um, one family actually traded him six hogs as payment for delivering the coal and collecting their junk. Um, and he accepted those hogs as payment. Uh, more and more families kind of caught wind of that and they started trading him hogs. Um, it grew to over 2000 of them at one time. Uh, 2000 hogs is a lot. Um, there wasn't much room in Carthage, Ohio, so they moved here to Coring Township. We've been here since the 1940s. Um, because of those hogs, that's kind of where garbage collection started. Um, Mr. Rumpke would collect um, people's garbage. He would pull out anything that he could reuse or recycle. Back then, the garbage was a little bit different. It was more um, metal and food scraps and glass and, and things like that. So he would pull out anything that he could reuse or recycle um, and feed the scraps to the hogs. Um, in the 1950s, the government made things a little tough. They said that if you were going to feed those pigs with the intention of one day selling them for food, you had to cook the food that you were feeding them. Um, so at that point, he kind of had to decide whether he was going to sell off his hogs um, or and continue collecting garbage or continue with the successful farm that he had built. I'm sure you all can, can kind of guess what he chose there. So recycling in, in one stance or another, we've been doing it at Rumkey since, since the 1930s. Um, looks a little different now than it used to, uh, but still recycling in one sense or another. Um, so we purchased our first recycling center in 1989, and we opened Rumpke Recycling in Cincinnati in 1991. So today we have 12 different recycling facilities, including um, a Dayton glass processing plant. Um, so that's where all of our glass goes to Dayton to be processed. And annually, we recycle about a billion pounds of material. 
Um, I always like to touch on landfills as well when I do these recycling presentations, just to kind of give you an idea of the other side. Um, so we'll touch on landfills quickly. Um, this is kind of a picture um, and a diagram of what a landfill would look like. Um, I like to kind of explain to people that it's more than just putting trash into a hole in the ground. It's very highly engineered. There's a lot of layers that go into it. Um, we want to make sure that when the garbage is dumped, nothing's really um, getting into the ground and whatnot. So we put these kind of layers. I keep pointing on the screen like you can see what I'm what I'm doing. So I'll use my mouse. Um, so first off, they they dig the big hole per se. Um, and then there's three feet of compacted clay that's put down. Um, and then on top of that clay is is a layer of plastic that's kind of rolled down on top of um, on top of the clay and, and seamed up. Uh, you can kind of think about the hole that we put garbage in as kind of um, a big like swimming pool. Um, you know, nothing's getting out, nothing's coming in. That that plastic that we use is high density polyethylene. Um, so very strong plastic, but on top of that, we put a geotextile, which is um, very strong felt to protect that plastic. Um, and then on top of that, we do a drainage layer, which is usually shredded tires um, with pipes kind of interweaved between there um, to pull out all of the leachate. Leachate is just garbage juice pretty much. Um, so we, we collect that out so that we can treat it and it's not just sitting in there. Um, and then we can start layering the trash. Um, we put fluff garbage is what we call it first. Um, that fluff garbage is from residential homes. Um, so usually softer, the things that you throw away at your home are usually softer than the things you would throw away at an industrial site um, or at a business, um, things like paper towels and food scraps and things like that. So we layer that first and then we can start dumping everything. Um, so I always like to just touch on that a little bit just to give you a little background of the trash side of things. These are just pictures of the construction of a new landfill cell. Um, I'm gonna skip through some of that. We're gonna touch on recycling now um, because that's kind of what the webinar is about. Um, so when we first started recycling, it was called source separation. Um, so you sorted your recycling before you put it at the curb. So, so we wanted all of the newspapers separated, all of the cans separated, all of the glass, all of the plastics. Um, so you had to kind of separate that. It was a little tougher for people to do that. Today, we do what we call single stream recycling. Um, you put all of your recycling in one bin and we sort it for you. So it's a lot easier for people to recycle um, and you don't have to you know, um, sort everything yourself. So, so really the only decision that you have to make when you're throwing something away or recycling it is what bin does it go in, not, um, not kind of separating it all out yourself. Um, so just a little graphic of kind of what goes on. A lot of you probably have these red bins or the green carts. Um, it's just a lot easier, a lot more convenient nowadays to recycle than it was before. Everything just goes together in a bin. Um, so as this bin shows, everything comes to us mixed together. So our trucks go, go and pick up um, the bins that people leave at their curb and everything's mixed. Uh, but our next job is to sort it out. Um, so, so we sort it at a MRF is what we call it. Um, it's a material recovery facility. So at those MRFs, um, there's a lot of advanced machines and technology. Um, we use things like infrared light and magnets and conveyor belts, and we have AI robots. Um, so the whole entire goal is to sort the recyclables by type. So, so everything comes to us all mixed together in a bin. Um, and our, our goal is to separate it out again. So we want all the different types of plastic separated, all of the different types of metal separated. We want paper separated. Um, so everything kind of separated back out again. So, so those are the kind of machines that we use. Um, this picture right here, this is just a picture of um, the glass silo actually. So that's where the glass sits before it goes to Dayton. Um, this middle picture is um, just one of the conveyor belts that's through the plant. Um, and so is this. This is um, a picture of some bales of aluminum here. Um, if you're ever interested in touring, uh, feel free to reach out and we can set up a tour um, to get, get some of you out here. Um, these are what the bales look like when that, when that material is sorted out. Um, 
So, so just to, to reiterate, we, we go from everyone's recycling mixed in one bin um, to these bales of finished material. So these, these are pictures of the aluminum bales that we have. Um, those bales are what we send to the end user. The end user is the company that, that makes something new. Um, I always like to remind people that at Rumpke, we don't create anything new. So we are separating materials by type. Um, and we're sending them to an end user. Those end users are the companies that are making new products out of them. So no new product is coming out of Rumpke. Um, we're, just, we're just stripping down the materials and sending them out um, to an end user. Uh, these bales um, could weigh up to 2,000 pounds per bale. Um, and I always, I, I give these presentations a lot for kids. These bales are um, what, what you see in the opening scene for the movie Wally. Um, so that, that's one thing that the kids always point out um, about these. Um, so our end users create new products with those bales of material. Um, we ship out truckloads at a time of that material to the end users. Um, so our cardboard typically gets turned right back into corrugated boxes, those cardboard boxes. Um, and so does the mixed paper and newspaper. Typically, um, newspapers aren't as popular anymore. Sometimes it goes um, into paperboard, which is the thin kind of cardboard that a cereal box is made out of or granola bar box or something like that. Um, the aluminum cans, those get turned right back into aluminum cans. The whole process for that takes about 60 days. Um, so a really quick turnaround on those, on those aluminum cans. Um, your plastic bottles and jugs, those are um, getting sent to a company that makes irrigation pipe or um, plastic strapping tape. Um, I wish I had some examples with me. They're at uh, my other office. Um, but the strapping tape that I'm talking about is the tape that goes around like a pallet on a tractor trailer. Um, so it's just like a plastic tape kind of. Um, the steel cans, those get turned into new steel products. Um, whether it be car parts or appliances, um, new steel cans just kind of depends on what there's a need for. Um, the cartons, those are the aseptic containers, the um, like the chicken broth, the orange juice, the milk cartons, um, anything kind of like that, that material, those are getting sent to a company that makes tissues out of them typically. Um, so if you're ever in like a public restroom and you see the brown paper towels, sometimes they're speckled with different colors and things like that. They're usually made um, from recycled cartons. And then the plastic tubs, which would be your yogurt, sour cream, cottage cheese, those kind of containers are getting turned into new plastic containers. Um, so recycling the right things kind of increases the benefits of recycling. There's, there's a lot of benefits of them. I just kind of listed a few here. Um, so it reduces trash. Um, obviously, we estimate that um, about 50 to 60% of everything that comes to our landfill could have been reduced, reused, or recycled. Um, so when you think about it in that sense, it, it really kind of encourages you to, to recycle more and um, be educated on, on what you can and can't recycle. Um, it saves landfill space. Um, so, so we're permitted a certain amount of airspace to dump trash in the landfill. Um, that, that space is kind of never, it's, it's not never ending. So, so we will eventually way down the line run out of space if, we, if we're not um, recycling everything that we can. Um, and it's also saving limited resources. It's a lot easier to create something from something that has already been um, created than, than to make it from the raw material. Um, oops, went a little too quick. So these are just some fun little facts. If you recycle one aluminum can, um, it saves enough energy to run a computer for three hours or a TV for two hours. Um, that, that's one fact that I always tell the kids when I do these presentations and they're like, I could watch a whole movie if I recycle one can. <laughs> Um, using recycled paper fiber to make one ton of paper um, saves about 17 trees. Um, and recycling steel cans saves about 60 to 74% of the energy it would be to, to make the, that item from the raw material. Um, so next we're gonna talk about what you can recycle. And this is probably why a lot of you are here just to learn more about this. Um, so, so we put our acceptable items into five categories. These would apply to your residential curbside um, recycling or recycling at your business. Um, so you can recycle paper, cartons, metal cans, plastic bottles, jugs, and tubs, and then glass. Um, and I'm going to dig deeper into each of these categories. 
Um, so for plastic bottles, jugs, and tubs, and I should have wrote cups on here as well, um, but these are any kind of plastic container. Um, the plastic bottles and jugs, we, we try not to focus too much on the number of the plastic. Um, we, we kind of just focus on the shape. So if it's a bottle, jug, tub, or cup, put it in your bin. Um, we say that because the, the majority of the bottles and jugs and, and tubs and cups are, are the types of plastic that we accept. It makes it a lot easier for people um, if, if they're just looking for the shape as opposed to um, the number of plastic that's, that's being accepted. Um, so, so shampoo bottles, pop bottles, um, your milk cartons, your detergent, your sour cream, butter, yogurt, um, things like that. And then plastic cups as well. So, so your Starbucks cups and your McDonald's cups and things of that nature. Um, we, we'd ask that you keep the lids on top of those. So before you throw it in your recycle bin, screw the lid back on um, and put it in your bin. And then obviously we ask that, that it's empty as well. Um, metal cans, we accept aluminum, steel, and tin. Um, so any soup can or Skyline can or something along those nature. Um, and aerosol cans as well. We just don't want hazardous materials. So if it's something like spray paint or, or motor oil or something like that, leave it out of your recycle bin. Um, but hairspray and things like that are acceptable. We just want them to be empty. Um, and if you can see on the top of this hairspray, the, the nozzle has been taken off. So we ask that you take that off as well. Um, and then aluminum cans, obviously. Um, glass bottles and jars will take all color, including clear. Um, so your pickle jar, your jelly, your wine, your sparkling water, um, anything that really comes in a glass of any color. Um, there's always a lot of questions about the lids on these um, because like the jelly jars and the pickle jars typically have those metal lids. Um, we ask that you take those lids off. Um, but you can still put the lids in your bin. Um, the lids will be picked up by the magnet. Um, cartons and aseptic containers we accept. Um, we just want the caps and straws removed from it. Um, so things like your milk cartons, your orange juice, chicken broth, um, these little kids juice um, cartons like this. Um, we want the caps and the straws taken off. Uh, a lot of people ask if they need to cut out like the plastic nozzle or on this chicken broth, if, if you would need to cut that out. Um, the answer is no, we wanna make it as easy as possible for everyone to recycle. Um, so don't worry about you know cutting out those plastic pieces. Um, and paper and cardboard. Um, so the question to kind of ask would be, does it tear down and does it break in, down in water and is it contaminated? So, so the things that we see on here, you see paper towel roll, um, cereal boxes, frozen food boxes, things like that. We, we don't see phone books very much anymore, but if you're getting rid of your phone books, you can recycle those. Um, paper bags, pizza boxes, we also accept. Um, we just ask that those are not super dirty. Um, so if it's covered in grease or covered in cheese or something, rip the top off and um, recycle that, but um, throw away the part that would be covered in, in grease or cheese. Um, some things that we don't accept uh, would be things like cell phones or batteries. Um, those lithium ion batteries cause a huge problem for us. Uh, those lithium ion batteries can cause fires. So we ask that you do not put those in your recycle bin. Um, you can usually look on like the county website and it will tell you where you can, you can safely dispose of those. Um, plastic bags hoses, coat hangers, we, we don't accept those because those get wrapped up around our machines. Uh, we use a lot of spinning disc to sort through things. Um, so we don't want those put in your bin. Plastic bags, um, I always tell people if you don't want to take them to Kroger to recycle them or the grocery stores, they usually have a thing at the front door um, that you can put them in. Just, just reuse them once, give them another life, you know, use it as a, use it as a trash bag before throwing it away. Um, propane tanks, we, we put, have to put that in there. I know it seems silly, but a lot of people put those in their recycle bin and send them to us. Um, so we don't want those um, and, and VHS tapes because people don't use those very much anymore. Um, people have been putting them in their bins. Um, while it is plastic, the tape on the inside of them gets tangled up around all of our machines. So we ask that you also don't put those in your bin. Um, so what happens next? I mentioned before 
um, that we bail all of the material up and then we send it to an end user and the end user is the one that makes something new out of it. Um, so again, it's important to note that we're just a processor, we're, we're not an end user. Um, so we just collect and we sort things, um, but the material is shipped to an end user to, to take that sort of material and turn it into a different product. Um, those companies are Envision, Pure Cycle, St. Joseph's Plastic, Pratt Paper. Uh, there's a bunch of different companies that we send things to. And I always like to point out to people that Remke, um, we send 80% of our material right back into the tri-state um, for, for the companies and those end users. Uh, with the exception of our aluminum, we have to send that um, down south to get, to get processed. But most of our end users are right here in the area. Um, um, a lot of people have questions as well as to why we expand the acceptable items list. Um, so, so the reason for that would be because we're, we're always working with partners and, and we want to develop solutions for recycling um, and kind of expand the opportunities that we have. So for example, um, last year we started accepting um, cups, so the paper, the plastic, and the aluminum cups, um, and then the year before, so 2020, or 2021, we started taking the tubs. Um, so the yogurt, cottage cheese, sour cream, butter, things like that. Um, the reason that we were able to expand our acceptable items list is, is when we, we secure an end user that, that will take the material um, and we secure technology to help us sort. So, so we added robotic technology into our um, facility to help us sort out those cups and things. Um, and we, we have a paper mill that, that pledged to accept them, which is why we can, we can add that to our acceptable items list. Um, so I think that's all I have for you. It's a lot of information that I kind of threw your way. So I see we have a lot of questions. Elise, do you want to read the questions out and then? Yes. Okay. Tina, can you hear me okay? Maybe you could repeat. I can hear you. I can hear you. If you can't hear me, maybe you can like quickly repeat it. So okay. the first question that a lot of people have asked um, okay. is, can you essentially do items have to be rinsed before recycling? And I've answered a few of them and you can kind of continue that. Um, so, so that's a good question. And that's something that a lot of people ask. So when we say rinse, I don't mean that you have to like scrub it down, you know, get soap and a sponge and really scrub it out. What I usually do to rinse is put warm water, shake it up, rinse it out. Um, we just don't want the material coming to us super dirty. Um, one, because those things like the milk products, typically in the tubs, um, they smell bad if, the, if they're kind of covered and things like that. But also, um, since all of the material comes to us mixed, we don't want, you know, grandma's spaghetti sauce left in the jar all over the paper that we're sending to the paper mill. Um, they don't want that either. They don't want dirty material. So that's kind of, that's kind of why we ask people to rinse it out. So the answer is yes, we, we want it clean, but, but you don't need to take your time to, you know, scrub it out and rinse it. Um, for a lot of things too, sometimes I'll, I'll just put them in my dishwasher when I'm running the dishwasher. So, you know, those peanut butter jars and, and the pasta sauce and, and whatever, I just put it in the dishwasher and then do that. Um, but it's, it's kind of up to you how, how much you want to um, go to lengths to rinse it out. And I'm going to go through some of these. Can cardboard egg cartons be recycled? Um, so that's a tough one. You know, Yes, they can be recycled. You can put those um, in your recycle bin. The thing that I always tell people though is those, um, the cardboard egg cartons, they're, they're really fibrous. Um, that fiber is kind of at the end of its life. Um, so, so to say that it, it, it's gonna get turned into something new, it will get sorted, it will get sent to the paper mill. Um, but typically what happens to those is they just kind of dissolve and, and disintegrate. Um, at that point. But yes, you, you can put those in your bin. Not the styrofoam ones, though. <laughs> okay, so I have a question that says, tell us more about code one plastic. This is always a big question. So can you take number one clamshells, number one cups, and number one lid? <laughs> this is where things get tricky. It is where things get tricky. Um, so 
yes, we do take number ones, but no, we don't take clamshells. Um, the clamshells, they're a thermoform. And, and for people who aren't familiar, the clamshells that I'm talking about would be um, like your takeout container or your berry container or something. Oh, I think Elise might be getting one. Um, wow, that is a number one plastic. Yes, like this, the, the clamshells. While it is a number one plastic and it gets sorted with the number ones, um, more examples of number ones would be, you know, water bottles, pop bottles, two liters, Gatorade bottles, things like that. Um, the melting point for a thermoform like that um, is different. So, so when we send our number one plastics to our end users, um, they don't want the clamshells in there because it, it's not the same uh, melting grade as the, the bottles. Um, so I hope that answered. So long story short, no, we don't take <laughs> clamshells um, and take out containers and things like that. Hopefully um, in, in the year to come, maybe um, that could be something that we'll be able to expand into. Um, there's just not really an end market for that yet. Okay, and this, this question has come up a few times. What okay. happens to non-accepted items that have been put in residential recycling? Yeah. Um, so the non-accepted items, they would, you know, it, it all comes to our facility to get sorted um, as it makes its way through the line. The machines do all of the sorting um, and we have people on the line as well. The things that aren't acceptable that we don't accept in our program, whether that be the types of plastics that we don't want, um, a, a material that's super dirty that, that wouldn't be able to be recycled. Um, it kind of gets kicked off the line at one point or another. Um, and that stuff will, will end up being landfilled. Um, so, so the things that aren't acceptable and that, that we can't send to an end user will end up going to the landfill in the end. All right, thanks, Anna. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a question. Oh, so what is the threshold for how much grease can be in a pizza? <laughs> Um, I always tell people, you know, don't think too much into it. If there are spots on your pizza box, um, but it's not like completely covered and dripping, it, it's fine. Um, we, we more so just mean we want it clean. We don't want, you know, cheese stuck to the bottom of the box and things like that. The pizza companies have been doing a lot better. I know exactly, or especially like La Rosa's, they put, um, like the wax paper sheet in there. Um, to keep from that grease getting on the cardboard box. Um, but yeah, as long as it's not like dripping in grease um, and covered in cheese, it should be fine. Perfect. The next one, would you accept empty butane fuel canisters? Um, I'm going to go with no on that. I would, I would assume I'm not entirely familiar with butane fuel, but I would assume that would be hazardous. So, so probably not on that. <laughs> Sorry, Ellie. <laughs> um, and can you, oh, can you recycle clean butcher paper? It's coated mm -hmm. on the inside, similar to coffee cups. Um, butcher paper, like the paper, I guess that you would get from a butcher that would wrap meat. Um, I, I'm going to go with no on that because typically it's, it's wrapping raw meat and things like that. Um, so I'm going to go with no on, on that kind of paper. Yeah. And, and usually it's kind of waxy too. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go with no on that. Okay. And would you accept clear plastic pint and quart size tubs that are usually a number five? My guess is Ellie is thinking about um, like takeout or style containers, maybe that you get from certain restaurants. Um, Ellie, you can correct me if that's wrong. If it's, if it's a tub, yes, we'll take it. Um, I guess to kind of sum that up. Yes, we'll take it. I'm thinking about like, um, you know, like the egg drop soup that comes in like a tub mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, that would be accepted. We'll take that's that. Accepted. Okay. Yeah. Great. I was thinking about like a lot of um, restaurants, like where I get like a curry or something. Yes. Yeah. It comes in like the tub. Yeah. So rinse it out nicely mm -hmm. and then it can be recycled. Yeah. When we say no to takeout containers, we mean like the, the takeout, you know, clamshell boxes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And do you accept paint cans? So like, I'm, I think this person, Maribel, is thinking of like a paint can that you would use to paint your house. 
Um, no, not necessarily the paint cans. Um, they're, they're typically impossible to get the paint out of that can. Um, and, and they're usually pretty dirty. So, so no on the paint cans. Okay. And is it a certain number of plastic for the cups that you can recycle? Yes. Um, so, so the plastic cups will, will take them. Um, we just ask that you don't put the solo cups in there. So, so the party cups, um, those solo cups are made typically, um, at least if they're the solo brand, they're made from number six plastic, which is polystyrene. Um, and there's not an end market for that. Um, so, so we tell people that we accept plastic, paper, and aluminum cups. Um, so, so we do get a lot of the solo cups, they get sorted out, they end up in the landfill. Um, but, but no, we, that's the only kind of plastic cup that we ask you not to put in there. Um, like your McDonald's cups and your Starbucks cups and, and those kinds of plastic cups are fine. So it's really any of them, but solo, solo brand cups. Yes. And I will get to a, a few of these questions later. Some of them are a little more beyond just the curbside. So I'm going to finish with okay. the side and then we'll continue um, with any extra time we have. I think we're doing okay. well on time. So tissue paper, gift wrap, gift bags, and any paper with mixed materials. So like goldfish bags, um, yeah, like coating, like for gift bags and stuff like that. Um. So, so that's kind of a, a layered question. Tissue paper, yes. Um, yes, we will accept it. it. It's kind of along the same lines as those paper egg cartons that I was talking about. That tissue paper, the fiber is really short, usually at the end of its life. Um, but yes, we'll accept it. Wrapping paper, you know, gift bags, things like that. Um, yes, we'll take it, but we don't want like the, um, the foily or the glittery or, or things like that. Um, so if it is foiled wrapping paper, I know some of them are super pretty and they have foil inlays and whatever on them. Um, so no, but if it's the basic um, wrapping paper, basic gift bags, things like that, we'll take it um, in, in the space of like a goldfish bag, that would be a no as well. Okay. And I'm trying to figure out. Okay. There's all kinds of questions. Oh, aluminum foil and aluminum pie pans. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so for aluminum foil, we, we accept aluminum. We, we really only want the aluminum pans. Um, the aluminum foil, the aluminum pie pans, um, things like that. Those are made from a different, so, so yes, it is aluminum, but it's, it's a different alloy than like an aluminum can. Um, so, so we say no on pie pans, aluminum foil, um, things like that. Yeah. We say no, it's just a different alloy, different, different kind of aluminum. Okay. Paper envelopes with bubble wrap inside. Oh, um, the bubble wrap. No, I was, I, I thought that you were going to go, um, like the paper <laughs> envelopes with the plastic, uh, um, like the address shield kind of. Um, we'll accept those, but, but no bubble wrap. No. Okay. Thank you. And ooh, do you have to throw away all materials that are put in a black plastic bag? So if people put recyclables in a plastic mm -hmm. bag. Um, so this is speaking from like a curbside standpoint. Um, so, so don't keep in mind like businesses and things like that, because those, the, that's a different entity. They usually put their recycling in a plastic bag, but from a curbside residential standpoint, no. Um, if you are still putting your recyclables in a plastic bag, um, and then putting them in your recycle bin nine times out of 10, it's, it's going to get pulled off the line and probably go to the landfill. Um, because nine times out of 10, the plastic bags that come through are trash, um, so, so we don't ask when, when they get pulled off the line, we don't ask our workers to, you know, rip them open to, to kind of decipher whether it's trash or recycling. Um, so, so if it's in a plastic bag, it, it's getting pulled off and, and thrown away typically. Um, the only exception to that is shredded paper. 
Um, so if you have shredded paper, like a shredder at your house, um, you can put that shredded paper. We ask that you put it in a clear plastic bag. Um, so like a clear trash bag um, and tie it up. Um, the workers on the line will be able to see into that plastic bag and pull it off the line. Um, because if you just dump your shredded paper into your recycle bin, it, it falls through the cracks and everything. Um, but, but that's the only thing in a plastic bag that we'll, that we'll take. So the looser, the better when it comes to recycling. Don't put it in the bag. <laughs> And this is a similar, this is a clamshell question. Mm -hmm. What about number one containers for spinach or other lettuces? Are those considered clamshells and therefore not recyclable? Yeah, it would be the same. Um, yeah, we don't take those. Okay. And what about plastic lids from plastic containers? <laughs> um, yeah, we want, we want your lids on there. So, so if you're recycling a tub, like your yogurt, um, cottage cheese, sour cream, put the lid right back on. You can put it in your bin. Um, uh, same thing with like a plastic cup. So if you have a Starbucks cup, a plastic cup, put the lid back on and you can put it in your bin. Um, and, um, uh, okay. Is it true that only 5% of our plastics get made into new products? Um, I can assure you, I cannot speak for every company, um, all over the country. But I, I can assure you that if you're recycling your plastics through Rumpke, um, which if you live in this area, you are, um, your recycling is is getting to an end user, getting turned into something new. So, so it's not like it, it's all coming to us and, and really we're, we're throwing it all away. Um, the only thing that does get thrown away in the end would be the things that we don't accept. Uh, but if you're if you're putting your your acceptable items in your recycle bin, um, just about all of it is is making it to the end user. Yep. And like I like I mentioned at the beginning, we recycle about a billion pounds annually. Um, and and to put it in a little bit more perspective, um, at our recycling facility, um, we run about fifty five tons per hour of material through there. Um, so a whole lot of material is getting run through. Are code one cups thermoformed and therefore also unacceptable? Um, and they're code one. So like a number one cup, mm -hmm. um, we, we accept that. We'll, we'll accept a number one cup. They're, those aren't really thermoformed, no. The third, when I say thermoform, I really am just talking about like the clamshells. Oh, those clamshells. Yeah. Okay. But a number one cup we'll take. Ooh, I see somebody who said some Starbucks cups are paper. Are those lids okay too? That's um, so so on in a in a Starbucks cup standpoint, um, we'll take the paper cup, um, but we ask that the the plastic so so it's a different material. Obviously, it's a paper cup with a plastic lid. Um, take the plastic lid off and throw that away. Um, the reason for that being is that those lids are typically made from polystyrene. Um, which is the same thing that like a solo cup is made out of. Um, so we, we can't take that. But the paper cup, yes, we'll take, we'll take all your Starbucks cups all day long. <laughs> okay. Are cardboard drink carriers able to be put in our recycling? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Those would be the same as like the, the fiber egg cartons as well. Yes. We'll take those. And pass plastic packing pillows acceptable? No. No, no. Oh, how can we get Kroger to change to a more eco-friendly fruit salad? Oh, that would be a good question. I can task you with that. How, um, go to Kroger and um, tell them, no, I'm kidding. But um, uh, it, it's just the plastic bags, really. That, that's the big problem. Um, and we were so close to getting rid of the plastic bags in Cincinnati. Um, and then COVID hit. Um, and, and we kind of needed them for takeout and, and things like that. Um, so, so plastic bags really are kind of our enemy um, in, in this standpoint. Um, so I encourage people to, you know, use, use recycle or reusable bags, um, or if you have to get a bag from the store, get paper um, and you, you can recycle those paper bags. Um, but the plastic bags, really, we, we don't want those. <laughs> All right, next one. Do you take the bags that one would get from the Cincinnati Zoo that have already been made with recyclable material, but now need to be recycled themselves? 
I am not entirely familiar with what kind of, so what it, is it a plastic bag or is it? Um, let's see, Hannah Cox, you, you put that uh, question in about the bags from the Cincinnati Zoo. If you would like to add on to that, that'd be helpful. No need to be. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. If it's a plastic bag, I'll, it's a no. Um, but if it's, you know, like a paper or a fiber bag, we could, but I'm not entirely sure about those while we're waiting on that um how should we treat cling wrap boxes so cardboard but with a metal serrated edge cling wrap boxes oh you're talking about yes i know um so yeah the cardboard is acceptable um and and they usually have like the metal on the bottom um i'm gonna go ahead and say you, you can still put those in your bin they'll they'll get sorted with the paper and the fiber and that little metal edge will will likely be fine yeah i know a lot of these are like one-off questions um so at least please feel free to share my contact information oh, i have wow. people emailing me and and texting me my, my phone numbers on there all the time just you don't even have to say anything just a picture of something <laughs> you know and and i'll i'll give you a yes or a no <laughs> absolutely and in my in my email that includes the webinar recording and any extra unanswered questions that we have not gotten yeah. to, i will include hannah's contact information yeah well, of course yeah and also i can share with you as well we have like lists like i'm not sure if you guys can see this um that i can share just a bunch of different materials um for the people who are really dedicated about it and really want to make sure you're recycling everything you can um, that I can share with you. And, and it's just a pretty much a yes or a no, like a, a, the name of something and a check or an X. So I'll share all of that with everyone as well. And I see a few of these things. I've seen a few people put this, are visuals available for educational use? And absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. So I have like, like this pamphlet and, and there's tons and tons more of them that we have, um, that I can share, um, for anyone who, you know, I, I like to have like one of them hanging on my fridge. You know, I do this all day, every day, but sometimes I'm still like, I'm not sure, you know, if I can recycle that or not. Um, so yeah, I have plenty of educational tools that I can send out and help. Awesome. And soap dispenser pumps. Soap dispenser pumps. Um, I say no on the pumps, but the, the bottles themselves, yes. I might have to come back to that one, though. I'm not entirely sure what the pump itself would be made. Are you familiar with what a pump I've is made? I've seen that on different, like, posters and things you're not supposed to recycle. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm thinking of it in the same sense as, like, a straw that's in a cup yeah. or something like that. Like, no, we wouldn't take that. But I don't actually know what plastic that would be made out of. I see something about clothing, and I know clothing is not for sale. No, no. <laughs> that gets tangled up in the machinery like the yep. bags would. Yep. And, man, you are full of questions. This is awesome. Okay, yeah. I need to go through and answer some of these. I do see a lot of people um, requesting that we plug the Cincinnati Reuse Yes. And reuse hub, which of course we yes. do at the end, but might as well do right now. Mm -hmm. um, so the Cincinnati Recycling Reuse Hub is a great place to go. And Hannah, maybe I'll have you finish this because yeah. you can't hear me. But um, the Cincinnati Reuse Hub is a great place to take a lot of items that Rumpke cannot accept. But there are still some things that the Recycling and Reuse Hub cannot accept. Yes. So you got to make sure to check their list. Um, yeah. And, and to kind of piggyback off of that, they're, they're a great partner of ours. You know, they take every, almost everything that we don't take um, and they don't want anything that we take. So like if you, the, the downfall to that is that you have to actually bring it to them. They don't pick it up and, and whatnot. Um, but if you're dedicated and, and would like to do that, they, they even say they're like, if you bring stuff that we take, they're like, put that in your, your rump key curbside. Um, but just some examples of things that they take would be like the chip bags, um, and they'll take the polystyrene and the styrofoam and, and the things like that. Um, so, so if you're really dedicated and, and really want to recycle everything you can make sure you, you check them out. 
um, I know families that that recycle through Rumpke and through the hub as well, um, and they are significantly lessening the amount of trash that they send to the landfill. I'm talking like a, a Kroger bag full of trash every two weeks. Like they they really can you can really drop it down a lot if you're if you're dedicated to it. Yes, and the the recycling and reuse hub will not accept all the number ones. So that's mm -hmm. the one like that's the one thing the number one. Yeah they cannot accept those. Yep. Um, oh gosh. A lot of these are kind of like social change questions. How can we get uh, bars and restaurants to yeah. recycle more? How can we get Kroger to use fewer plastics? Um, I try to use uh, <laughs> pressure uh, with the dollar, I guess. <laughs> and uh, use as many reusable items as you can. Try to... Um, try to use as many things as you can and recycle as much as you can curbside, but even better reduce having to buy yeah. plastics in the first place if you can, because plastics are the biggest issue right now, of course. Mm -hmm. um, lots of, lots of things. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see that, okay, this presentation is oriented toward residential recycling. Yes. But does Rumpke have programs for specifically industrial recycling as well? Um, yes, I'm not entirely familiar with like the industrial standpoint. Um, I could I could get you in contact with someone who could help you for that with that, um, but I'm not entirely familiar with that. Whoever answered, I don't see that question, but if you if you want to reach out to me, um, feel free and I can get you in contact with the correct people in in terms of industrial recycling or and and industrial waste. Oh, I do see one more specific recycling one. Uh -huh. Ice cream containers. Yes. Yeah, we'll take ice cream container. Um, I always kind of tell people the, the ice cream containers are kind of just like like a big paper cup kind of is, is kind of what they are. So yeah, we'll take those. And please rinse those. <laughs> yes, yes, please rinse them. If they're dirty and sticky and everything, we don't want them. And Ziploc plastic bags are not accepted. No, no, no plastic bags. All right, and a few people have asked as well, have you ever considered a food scrap pickup or composting service? Uh, I get asked that all the time. I know. <laughs> um, so on like a curbside standpoint, not currently. Mm -hmm. Composting is like a whole other beast um, that, that, that we, we aren't expanding into that. Quite yet, no. <laughs> to, to answer your question, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, lots of people. I will share the lists. I promise. Yes, yeah. I will send them all over, and and we'll share those. Um, and final final thing to share. Other people have requested this as well. This is a great <laughs> idea. So, in addition to the Cincinnati Recycling and Reuse Hub for items that can't be accepted curbside. Mm -hmm. Are places for donation like of course you can always donate to a thrift store if you have clothing that you need yep. to donate give to a home give to a shelter they're very much in need of those items and crayons to computers is a really really great yep. one for school supplies um, maybe electronics that are still in um, good shape and could be used at schools by teachers science items that could be used by teachers things of that nature can mm -hmm. be to donated to crayons to computers and um there are many places in this area just do a google search of um any shelters specifically that are looking for some of those items don't throw away if you can so <laughs> find places to get them yeah just don't put them in the curbside recycling if you know mm -hmm. yeah there are especially in cincinnati we're very fortunate there is a lot of outlets um, to, to pretty much recycle everything, everything out there. Um, if, if you use all those outlets, the, the amount of trash that you would have for, for a week or two is, is very minimal. So. And okay. The fine, maybe I'm going to ask you two more questions. That's fine. No, no, you're fine. So the uh, more Kroger questions, what okay. do you do with the single use plastic bags if people return them for recycling at the store? So I, I should know the answer to that, but I, I'm not entirely sure exactly what they do with them. I believe they, they use them to make new, new bags out of them. Um, I'm not really entirely sure what, what they do with them though. 
Um, I'm going to write that down. Actually, I I'll, I'll research that after this. To, I, to can, I can include that on our list. Yes. Uh, yeah. That require a little more in-depth uh, research yeah. or a little more of an in-depth answer than we can provide with five minutes to spare. <laughs> um, oh, what do you do to be certain that the end user is really remaking something versus trashing? You kind of touched on that in your presentation. Yeah. Um, um, to touch on that a little bit more. So, so we have a marketing team here um, and, and not like a marketing marketing on the TV and whatever, a marketing team that markets our material to these end users. Um, they are constantly going to visit them um, to see their processes, to see exactly how it works um, and, and to ensure that they're making, making what, what they say they are making out of it. Um, so, so we don't really have an issue with that. We, we, we know that they're doing what they, what they say they are, um, as opposed to just taking it to the landfill. And they are always out visiting those companies and those end users. Um, and, and another point to that is that we have a good relationship with those end users. Um, so, so we, we trust them, they trust us. Um, but yes, they, they are definitely doing what they say they are. <laughs> I can assure you of that. Awesome. And Matthew 25, sorry, I forgot yes. to mention Matthew 25. They're fantastic as well. Another great place to donate items. Yes. That you cannot mm -hmm. put the curbside bin. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And I believe this is where we are going to conclude. <laughs> who have a, a question that I didn't quite get to or maybe didn't get fully answered like you had hoped. I am going to remain on for a little longer. Okay. Hannah has, Hannah has to go in a few minutes, so I will stay on for a little bit. But um, any last bit of questions that we didn't get to, we will research and send out in the big email that will be coming to you. I'm going to say by the end of this week, because yeah. to make sure that the recording's nice and ready to go for you and all the information is ready. And I will also share the digital list of what can and yeah. can be recycled. So I want to get a full quality email for you. So look out for that by the end of this week. So by yeah. Friday afternoon. And I always, uh, before I hop off here, I'm sorry, I have to, I have to run to another meeting. Um, but, but thank you everyone for hopping on. You know, it really takes people like you guys who are, are dedicated to even spending an hour of your time on a, on a webinar like this to educate yourself um, to really make the change. Um, and I, I challenge you to, to share everything that you learned with your family and your friends. Um, that, that's really how, how we're going we're gonna to see a shift in, in, in recycling more than we throw away. Um, so thank you all for, for coming on and, and listening to me talk for an hour. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for taking yeah. time out of your day to learn. Absolutely. Learn. I'm happy to do it. And if I can ever be a resource to any of you, um, let me know, please reach out. I'd be more than happy to help you. <laughs> for sure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys.